My dream is that Crossroads will be the place where thousands of outsiders will be invited to experience a changed life. It's week four of our All In series. Who's excited to dive in today? Now let's do this, let's do this. Uh, I'm really excited to be here with you today and to explore what God has in store for us. And the reality is today, uh, I think that we're at a crossroads. I mean, it's a play on words, right? We are crossroads, but we are, we're at a crossroads. And I truly believe with all of my heart that God has brought us to this place where God will take us as far as we let him. And that if together we decide that all of us are going to go all in, that there is no telling what God is going to do. I believe he's about to show up in a huge way. And I really think it's up to us as to how we respond right now in this moment, how God is going to move moving forward. Because I think it's a trajectory moment, right? However we decide we are going to respond right now is how God is going to respond to us. And so the question is, how far will you go? Will you go all in? And today as you walked in, if you're joining us, you know, here in Goshen or at Mishawaka or St. Pete, every chair has a commitment card on it today. And I know everybody's like, oh, is it commitment Sunday? No, that's next Sunday. So everybody breathe a sigh of relief, sigh of relief. Next Sunday is commitment Sunday. But I really want to take a moment to lean in to the gravity of what we are about to accomplish here as a church Because honestly, you guys, when we unlock that door of generosity in our lives and in our hearts, that's when God starts to show up and do extraordinary things in us and through us. And I want you to know that every single person here is invited to be a part of this journey, but no one is obligated. My thing is, I want you to go as far as God wants to take you. And I I truly believe that the only limit to where God wants to take us as a church is the level of our generosity. And so I really want you to be thinking about, praying about what it is that that next step of generosity that God is asking you to take. And as we dive into that concept today, I just want to remind you that it matters We are surrounded by thousands of outsiders who are desperate for the hope that we have in Jesus. And you know what? For whatever reason, especially this week, I've just had so many conversations with people who are hurting, with people who are desperate for the hope that we have in Jesus. And and Crossroads is that place where we are connecting people with Jesus. We are providing hope for today, for tomorrow, for eternity. This is the place where we are celebrating changed lives, and our community needs Crossroads. And so, you guys, we have an adventure ahead of us, and I can't wait to see how God's going to show up. And I think it starts next Sunday, where my dream is that at the end of our service together, Commitment Sunday, we'll all be turning in commitment cards, and all of us together be taking next steps of generosity. And as we dive into week four of this series, I know you guys are going, Tim, this is like five weeks of talking about money, and I I get it, I know. And if this is your first Sunday, welcome to Crossroads. We're talking about money today, yay! But the reality is we have to talk about this because it sets the stage for what is to come. Our mission here is unequivocally and unapologetically to connect as many people to Jesus as we possibly can. That is the why behind everything that we do. And if we are willing to lead the way with generosity, if we are willing to follow Jesus, to trust Jesus, to make him the highest priority in our lives, to be willing to surrender. And what we're talking about today is surrender and sacrifice. If we're willing to go there, God will show up and do extraordinary things. And I can't wait to see what that looks like right here at Crossroads, you guys. I can't wait to see it. The bottom line is, I I want you to be thinking today about a truth and it's something I think that we need to reflect on. And honestly, it's, it's where we're going to end today. Uh, we're going to end this service today by receiving communion together. Because the reality is we have to remember that Jesus has given everything for us. He laid it all out on the line. He paid the price for us that we could not pay. He has given us a gift that we could never earn. He made the ultimate sacrifice. He, he gave his life for us on that cross so that we could be forgiven so we could be set free, so that we could have a future. That's what Jesus has done for us. 
And the question where we're going to end today is, is what is he wanting us to do for him? What does he want me to surrender to him? And we talk about these things all the time in terms of what is the hurt, the habit, the hang-up that I need to surrender to Jesus. And everybody engages with that. We, we engage with that, right? We say, I want to surrender and dedicate my children to Jesus. I, Jesus, I trust you with my eternal destiny. But then we talk about money. Jesus wants you to trust him with your money. You're like, no, anything but that. It's like the last frontier in our lives. And I really want us just to lean in to that reality today that Jesus has given everything for us And I ask the question, what is it that he is asking you to give to him? The truth is, there is joy that comes from giving. Some of the happiest moments of my life have been uh, when I was on the side of the spectrum where I was able to give. Uh, Ten years ago this weekend, we celebrated uh, Carter's four-year birthday. And we had a big party with all the family. It was a great time. And this picture was taken where we gave him a John Deere Gator. It was like the biggest present we ever gave our kid. And will you look at that face? I mean, honestly, I don't like to think that I'm partial. just a regular dad, but what a beautiful little boy that is with just a beautiful face and a beautiful smile. He is so happy in that moment. And honestly, the feeling that comes from being able to give a gift like that, that's been one of my favorite pictures uh, throughout our years because it's just sheer joy. And to be able to know that I was able to, to provide that, you know, willing to step up and go, those John Deere Gators cost how much? And, and being willing to pay the price for that moment. Uh, what's hilarious is that, I mean, immediately after that picture was taken, that was Carter's first ride around. We did the big reveal. It was all put together in charge. We take the box off. There's the John Deere Gator outside. He takes off and drives around for a while. As soon as he got off, one of his cousins jumped on the Gator and immediately drove it straight into the side of our deck and chipped off the front bumper. Honestly, I wasn't planning on taking a dive like that. That was just kind of impromptu. It was kind of fun. Um, (laughs) You're like, no, what just happened? (laughs) Uh, But all is well that ends well. But what's funny is I showed Carter that picture this week, and he said, oh, I love that gator. Remember when our cousin got in there and destroyed it right away? I was like, yes, I remember. I remember. (laughs) But it doesn't take away from the joy that comes from giving. And I, I want to challenge you with this concept today that when it comes to leading the way with generosity, that is what impresses God. Think about that for a second. You want to impress God? Like when you ask yourself the question, who am I trying to impress? If I'm trying to impress God, when I lead the way with generosity, that is impressive to him. And this couldn't be highlighted any more clearly in Luke 21. This is a fantastic interaction, just a snapshot of the life of Jesus. And it occurs at the temple. And it says, while Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people (laughs) dropping their gifts in the collection box. Can we just stop and talk about how awkward that is for a second? Jesus was sitting at the temple teaching? Nope. Healing the, the, the sick? Nope. Watching the rich people give their offerings? Yes. Like, what? What's happening right now? So can you imagine being that guy? Like you go in, you're dropping off your offering, and Jesus is kind of, I can see him just kind of crouched there. Like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> right? Like, drop it in. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I've got more. It's awkward, right? It's kind of a weird moment. Jesus is watching specifically the rich people drop their gifts in the collection box. But it says, then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. And what a powerful moment this is. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has given more than all the rest of them. For they have given a tiny part of their surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. And this moment impressed Jesus. And I go back to what we've covered in this series so far, that reality that when when God asks us to, to follow him, 
to deny ourselves, to take up our cross daily, to follow him, to force us out of our comfort zone. We recognize that there's no comfort in the growth zone, right? And there's no growth in the comfort zone. The only way I grow is, is by stepping out of that comfort zone. All right, God, you're asking me to, to be generous with my money. All right, this is uncomfortable for me, but let's go there. I want to grow. There's this reality that, that we learn here that, man, God really truly doesn't care about your money, He cares about your heart. And this illustrates that so perfectly. Man, it's a matter of the heart. That's what impressed him. And and I want you to know today, when it comes to generosity, it's not that God wants something from you. He wants something for you. He wants you to unlock through generosity the door for him to be able to do extraordinary things in your life. I would contend with you today that if you're not leading the way with generosity, if you're not letting go of the earthly treasure and willing to invest in that eternal and heavenly treasure, you're missing out. You're missing out on what God wants to do in you and through you. There is joy that comes from living generously. We just have to be willing to step out of our comfort zone and go there. And I, I just want to remind you here as we dive in, our sacred moments with God, they always take place within our moments of surrender. They always take place in moments of surrender, where I say, God, not my way, not my desires, but your way, your desires. Every single beautiful and sacred moment that we experience with God, it, it happens in that moment and in that place of surrender. And so again, right, we surrender our family to God, we surrender our kids to God, we surrender our life, we surrender our future, our hope for eternity, and then we hold so tightly to our earthly treasure. I, just, I have to ask you today, who are you trying to impress? Think about it. And, and how could you impress God by living generously? He's asking us just to approach Him with, with palms up, right? God, whatever you want, it's yours. I'm here. My, my whole life, it, it's, it's, it's here. Palms up. I'm open. Whatever you want. That's the life that pleases God. That's the life that follows him. That's the life that trusts him. That's the life that makes him the highest priority. It's God first. And so what does that look like when God calls us to step out of our comfort zone, to, to that place of surrender, even to that next step of sacrifice? What does that look like? I would contend today as as we unpack this scripture that we see a a real truth in Romans 12, 1 and 2. It says in Romans 12, 1, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Remember, Jesus has given everything for me. So the response is, what is it that he's asking me to give to him? And Paul is saying, live your bodies as sacrifices to him. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. Then he says, this is truly the way to worship him. My body is a living sacrifice. That means my attitude in my daily life is that of surrender. God, it's not what I want. It's what you want. It's going above and beyond and and living sacrificially, living generously. That's how we worship God. That's how we impress God. That's how we live life to the fullest. That's what I want for every single one of us to be experiencing, this life that's in tune with Jesus. In Luke chapter 12, there's an interesting encounter that happens where Jesus kind of dives into this concept and tells a parable. Uh, He's teaching the people about the kingdom of heaven when someone calls from the crowd uh, who's not plugged in at all. Let's just, I'm going to start it with that. He's not been paying attention to anything that Jesus said up to this point. Someone called from the crowd, teacher, teacher, Please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. (laughs) I mean, Jesus is performing miracles. He's changing people's lives. He's teaching about the kingdom. Jesus, can you help me with my money? Okay. You're missing the point, bud. (laughs) Jesus replied, friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, beware. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. I mean, think about the perspective in that moment there for a second. Here's a guy in the crowd who's watching Jesus teach about the kingdom of heaven. He's watching Jesus perform miracles. And 
he's not even engaging in what Jesus is actually doing. All he's thinking about is, maybe Jesus can help me with my, my father's estate issues because I'm having some problems. He's missing what God's trying to do. I mean, you catch that? Greed is making him miss out on the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus is calling him out. Beware, gu- beware guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. And so the first problem is when I have the wrong priorities, right? When, when I have the wrong goals in my life. And so I want to ask you another question. Like, first question is, who are you trying to impress? And the second question is, what really is the goal of your life? What's the target that you're aiming for? Because you've got to make sure it's the right target. Because we have one life on earth, it will soon be passed, and only what's done for Christ will last. This all flows, this all builds on each other. It comes to this place where we realize God is calling me to a place of surrender. He wants me to be 100% focused on him. And I'm to be a living sacrifice. I'm to be willing to go above and beyond. It's not what I want, it's what God wants for my life. It's when I find myself in that position, in that place that God uses me. He works in me, he works through me. But greed, man, that's the trap, right? And it's at odds with the very nature of who God is. Check out what it says in 1 John 2, 16. Just listen to this. It says in 1 John, For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. These are two completely opposite spectrums. These are two completely different universes, all right? There's greed and there's generosity. The world says, be consumed with just that pursuit of more, 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 more. And Jesus is saying, listen, that's a trap. All of that stuff, all that desire, everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, it does not come from the Father. That's not me. That comes from the world. The opposite is actually true. I mean, the most famous verse in the Bible, the most recognized verse, John 3, 16, shows the heart of God. It's not that of greed. It's of generosity. John 3, 16 says, God loved the world so much that he gave. That's the heart of God. He gave. He gave his one and only son, his greatest possession, the greatest sacrifice, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting, have eternal life. This is the ultimate sacrifice. This is the ultimate gift This is the ultimate act of generosity, and we see very clearly that that is who God is. He's not a God that's consumed by greed. That's anything that's that's focusing on greed is a thing of this world. Jesus is saying, that's not who I am. That's not from me. I'm the God who gives. I'm the God who loves with extravagant love. If, If you're wanting to impress me, don't be consumed with greed. Live generously. That's what makes me happy. That's what impresses me. That should be the goal of your life. And so he tells a story. He says, a rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. I love how Jesus talks to himself in the third person while he's telling a story. That just amuses me personally. I, my friend, you're preaching a good sermon today. <laughs> That's just kind of fun, right? Jesus says, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool." You will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? I mean, what he's pointing out here, what he's circling with a a big red marker here is, hey, you're being consumed by greed. And you're missing out on what it is that God wants to do in your life. And so the problem then becomes, I'm not only focusing on the wrong priorities, but I'm too focused on my possessions. Not once in this story did this guy ever think, with all of my surplus, with everything that I have, I have so much stuff that I can't eat, I don't even have room to store it, instead of, you know, thinking, well, maybe I could, you know, give some of this away. Maybe I could be generous. Maybe I could help someone in need. Never even crossed his mind. The only solution he had was, I guess I should build bigger barns. I can have more room to hold all my stuff. Jesus is saying, hey, you fool. You're focusing on the temporary stuff, and you're missing out on the eternal stuff. 
Tonight you will die, and who will get everything you worked for? I mean, this speaks to the power of greed, that spirit of mammon that we talked about a couple, a couple of weeks ago. That idea that that spirit of money that is the lie that, that tells us money can provide us all the thing that only God can provide. I mean, it's, it's, it's money saying, I can promise you happiness. I can promise you fulfillment. I can promise you security. I can promise you joy. I can promise you friendships. None of those things are actually true, maybe for a while, but ultimately it is God that provides all of those things in our lives. And so the trap that we fall into is we're putting our trust in our money, the temporary things, instead of things that are eternal, our, our trust in God. And again, it comes back to that, that reality that God wants us to surrender to Him, to be willing to live as, as a sacrifice to Him. God, everything in my life, it's yours. And oftentimes the last thing that, that we're willing to surrender and give up is the money, right? And so he finishes this whole story by saying in Luke 12, yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. You can't have one without the other. That's the trap that we fall into. There's nothing evil or wrong about having money. It's, it's that love of money that is the root of all evil. When you're when your perspective is wrong, when your focus is wrong, you're, you're focusing on the wrong priorities, you're focused on your, your possessions instead of focusing on Jesus. And he's saying you've got to focus on having a rich relationship with God. Make sure you're focusing on the right things. And so the problem becomes I have the wrong perspective. I am focusing on all of the wrong things. And I think in our culture today especially, I think the battle we have to fight is is the battle to step out of the comfort zone, right? Because comfort becomes our God. If, if I have to get uncomfortable, if, if this pushes me out of any type of place where I feel stable and secure, that's a tough sell. And yet God is asking me unequivocally to, to live this life of surrender, to be willing to sacrifice and draw close to Him. You talk about stepping out of your comfort zone, Let's talk about what that means to truly live sacrificially. And I want to remind you as we dive into this portion that Jesus has given everything for us. And I think the question has to be, what is he asking me to give to him? Jesus has led the way with surrender. He's led the way with sacrifice. And it's on us to see how we will respond in this moment. And I think a lot of times when it comes to this idea of sacrifice, we actually are willing to sacrifice. And I think it's just the wrong areas of life. And not that any of these things are wrong, but when, we, when it comes to this idea of sacrifice, you know, we're willing to sacrifice for our families, whatever it takes to make sure that our families are safe and, and happy and healthy and well. I think we're willing to do that. Uh, obviously, I think we're, we're willing to make sacrifices to make ends meet and to make sure that the ones we love are taken care of. But I would submit to you today that we're willing to make unnecessary and extravagant sacrifices just so that we can have fun, you know, with our hobbies, you know, maybe the extracurricular activities, uh, the different sporting leagues that we are all involved in. I mean, think about how much we sacrifice to be part of all these things that are, that are good things. They're not bad things. But man, they require a high price. Think about all the weekends you give up and the, the cash that goes out the door for the leagues, the hobbies, the Notre Dame games where they then get beaten. I mean, think about what happens there. Um, we, who is clapping? Uh, we need that, that, that. That's not allowed here. It's not allowed here. Uh, we're willing to, to sacrifice for certain things in our lives that we rationalize and justify and say, okay, that's worth the price. But I think the problem is Many of us hold back when, when God asks us to make a sacrifice for him and for the kingdom. We're willing to make a sacrifice for all these other things in life, but then someone says, hey, you willing to, to serve for an hour a week in ministry? You're like, oh, no, I'm very busy. <laughs> God says, I'm asking you to take a next step in generosity. And you're going, oh, no, no, I don't have the money for that. I don't have the money for that. What, what is it about that in our minds where we fight so hard against what God is calling us to be. What he's trying to do in us and through us. Why is it that we hold so tightly to our earthly kingdom and we don't focus on investing in things that have eternal value? 
What does that look like? Can we just go there for a second? We're challenging everybody when we, when we go in on this Commitment Sunday next week to make a commitment to lead the way in generosity. Now, we have a big vision for where we're going as a church. We want to be inviting thousands of outsiders each and every week to a changed life. We're investing in some infrastructure and some different ministries and leadership pipelines that I think are going to make a huge difference over the next few years. I, I can't wait to see what God is going to do. But that requires us all to, to take a real look at our lives and make sure, okay, yeah, I'm focusing on the right things. I'm investing in things that are eternal, not just things that are, that are temporary. What is that next step of surrender? What's that sacrifice that God is asking me to make? And when we talk about taking that next step of giving, that initial giver, man, I love these next steps because these are new steps that you can take in generosity that are going to revolutionize your relationship with God. I hear the stories over and over. I've already heard stories through this all-in series of people's lives who have been changed just because they've taken steps of generosity, because God shows up, and it's not about what you get. Can we just talk about that for a second? You don't give because of what you think God's going to give you back. Like, hey, I gave my offering today. When do I get my new car? What's happening? It's not like, what do you give? It's like, hey, there's a car for you, a car for you. It's not Oprah. Come on now. It's what God wants to do in your heart. It wants to, it's what he wants to do through you. And, and, and the, the things that begin to happen, the things that you begin to see God doing when you live generously, you will never experience those things if you're holding on to your temporary kingdom. And so when we talk about taking this next step of an initial giver, can we talk about what that looks like? Some sacrifices, oh, it's a terrible word. Some sacrifices that we could all make to go from, from not giving at all to being an initial giver. What, what could I give up to create margin in my life so that I could give? This one's gonna hurt. A trip to Starbucks every week. Ouch. That, ouch. Ouch. You could do it like I did. A Diet Mountain Dew could get you going for about 25 cents a can. Save you a lot of money. <laughs> you could give up, you know, when you go out to dinner, everybody order water this night instead of Coke, you know, and it saves you 10 bucks for your family of four, because that's where they get you, okay? <laughs> for us, for this is me, this is, this is just for uh, Fisher Boys, uh, we have pretty regular traditions throughout the week. There'll be nights when we go, all right, it's movie night, let's go downstairs, watch a movie, and inevitably one of my boys will say, Dad! Let's make a run to pack a sack. And what that means is we're all going to get in the car and take the one and a half minute drive down the road to the gas station. It's a pack a sack. And we just buy a bunch of junk food and then we come back and eat ridiculous food while we watch the movie. It's a terrible habit. It just adds calories. It makes us all fat. Uh, but we enjoy it. We could give up a pack of sack run every week. I'm sorry, boys. We could give that up. Uh, it saved me 10 bucks of wasting that on, you know, peanut M&Ms and a Propel. You know, whatever. Whatever it is that you're buying. That was specifically Jacob. And so, um, <laughs> those are the little things you can give up to say, all right, I could create margin in my life by sacrificing some small things. I can be an initial giver. What's that look like to take the next step, that, that regular giver? Oh, this, this starts to get more painful. Maybe it's, you know, like one less outfit a month, one less new outfit. And some of the ladies are going, no, 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 now we've crossed the line. <laughs> and some of the guys are saying, no, 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 now we've crossed the line. I get it. <laughs> Maybe it's one less subscription, right? Like how many subscriptions do you have to Netflix and Hulu? Do you really need all of those? Like there's 19 of them. Um, oh, this one hurts. Maybe it's like one less sporting event. One less football game you're going to. Like, oh, I guess I could watch that one on TV. Yesterday was the perfect game to watch on TV and not be there. Maybe it's one less run to the nail salon. Maybe one less pair of shoes. You guys, oh, that, that's kind of painful, Tim. And yet it creates margin for you to invest something in eternity. When we talk about intentionally giving, I mean, let's just be real. If you want to get serious about this and really truly invest in the kingdom, I mean, you can sit down, you look at your budget, you look at what's coming up in the next year, you look at all your vacations and maybe the car you need to purchase and, you know, think about it. Maybe I can wait getting a car for six months, you know, or maybe I get the Toyota instead of the Lexus. Who knows? Create some margin in my life where I can be a giver. Maybe it's looking down the, the road there and realizing I can put off some furniture. Maybe I don't need the iPhone 13 the day it comes out. Maybe I could wait on that. These are just ways to be intentional of creating some margin, sacrificing a little bit, you know, putting off some things that would be nice so that you can invest in the kingdom. 
Boy, when it comes to like the radical giver, I mean, these are awesome ideas. It's the idea of, you know, maybe you get a raise, right? You know, I got a raise. Well, maybe, you know, for the first year you give half your raise, it was unexpected, you know, to the kingdom. Maybe you've got something sitting in your driveway or garage that you could sell and you can say, you know what, I could invest that in the kingdom. An old boat or an RV or something that's just sitting there taking up space anyway. What does that look like where suddenly you're investing in eternity with things that have temporary value? Where you're starting to leave a legacy of generosity. Maybe it's that bonus that you get from work. Maybe you're realizing, man, I've, my retirement account is a huge right now. I, maybe some of the stuff that I'm putting away right now, I divert that and just give right now to the kingdom because I've got the extra. But these are legacy moments where you realize that I can create margin. I don't need all this for my earthly kingdom. I can invest in eternity. What does that look like? What does it look like to you to take that, that next level of generosity and maybe take that step of sacrifice that impresses God? I think it's different for all of us. But I got to be honest with you. I mean, here at Crossroads, in, in this season of generosity and all in, I'll tell you this. I mean, we've talked about this as a church board for almost a year. Your church board, they're all in. They're committed to leading the way in generosity, to, to giving sacrificially. Staff here at Crossroads, we've been talking about this for a long time. Your staff here is committed to leading the way in generosity, to giving sacrificially. Dana and I, we've had these conversations. What does that look like? And let me be honest, those conversations are just as painful for us as they are for anybody else. Like, how are we going to make this work? What's this going to look like? But we have the opportunity to invest in the kingdom. We have the opportunity right now to be part of something incredible. I think the only limit to how far God will take us in this season is, is the level of our generosity. How far will you go? How far will you let God take you? I go back to that story where Jesus is watching the people drop their offerings in and man, the thing that impressed his, him the most was the widow who gave her her two coins. She was all in. She was all in. And that impressed Jesus. He cared about her heart. I just want to challenge you to think about that reality. Jesus has given everything for me. What is he asking me to give to him? I love hearing people's stories when, when that light comes on, when they start leading the way in generosity, when, when they take opportunities to invest in the kingdom and, and God shows up, takes them a little bit deeper in their, their journey with him. Uh, one of those stories we, we were able to capture, and I want to share with you today, it's the story of Luke and Jamie here at Crossroads. Uh, lean in, listen to the story, and just see how generosity makes a difference and how investing in the kingdom uh, can change your relationship with God. Let's watch this story together. I'm Luke, and this is my wife, Jamie, and we've been members here at Crossroads for five years. We have two kids, uh, Eleanor and Asher, and they're ages two and four, but we just love worshiping here and the, the Crossroads family. I think one of the first things that we noticed was just, like, how welcoming it was. It was a diverse crowd. It was kind of like everybody was kind of on the same page though and here for the same reason. Everyone seemed very friendly. We never felt like we were being judged when we walked in. I mean, we were coming pretty regularly, giving on the weekends that we came, and then we attended that Best Week Ever event because it really showed like the outreach that the church had. Just to be able to see, you know, how the church was changing people's lives really hooked us. Started getting involved in things to get to know more people, and then more opportunities would arise. I would just encourage people to take the next step, especially for someone maybe who doesn't feel like they really know anyone. I would encourage them to just get connected, get involved, volunteer somewhere. I mean, that helps you get to know people and then you feel like part of the family. I had to go down to Tampa for, a, for an event for work. We ended the trip with her coming down and then we had plans to go on and spend a couple extra days, just her and I. The St. Pete campus had just opened, so we decided we were just gonna make plans, be there Sunday morning for one of the services. 
And then Remington was awesome. He took us around, told us the whole story about the church, its history, just, you know, in the area that it was in and how many people it was impacting. We saw the potential in the community. Remington had talked to us about, you know, how many families lived around, young families. We left with some really good feelings about everything going on and, like, the potential that was there. We saw the vision playing out here in Goshen with baptisms and connecting people with God, and we felt like the vision of Crossroads was going to be easily duplicated down there. We want to be part of that. I think it's important for us to give to the church because, one, it's being obedient to God. You know, everything that we have, He's given to us. And I've always kind of had the thought that we've been blessed to be a blessing to others. And no matter what you have, whether you feel like it's a lot or a little, it's more than somebody else. You should give what you can. I've never regretted giving, any, any form of giving, you know. It might be hard at first, but, you know, it's part of being blessed and being able to bless others. I would just say that God knows your heart. When you give, that's between you and God, and that's what you need to be focused on.